Hi, I'm Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that has maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I currently drive a car with over 230,000 miles on it, and I once had a car that had over 400,000 miles on it and ran very well. While you're watching the video, please watch a step or two ahead. Sometime the current step is better explained in the next step or two. Also, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you benefit from the information. Okay, I wanted to talk to you a minute about what happens if you overheat the car and the car fails to start after it was overheated. Here's a 2004 Audi A4. The uh, owner was playing what I call coolant roulette. That's when your car is leaking coolant and you're adding coolant over and over again a couple times a week or a few times a month to keep the coolant level up, trying to stay ahead of the leak. It's never a good game to play, and sooner or later, you're going to not have enough time, or you're going to think you're going to be okay, and it's not going to work out for you. The car is going to lose too much coolant, then it's going to overheat. So let's dig in a little bit, and after this car overheated, it failed to start the next time the owner tried to start it. What usually happens when a car is overheated is it'll blow a hose or two and then uh, the temperature will continue to rise. The needle inside the car will probably go into the red before you know it and the car will start running rough. When the car starts running rough, uh, that's when you normally look down and see that the temperature gauge is rising and by that time, it's probably already in the red. And since the car is running rough, it's already too late. On this particular car, after the owner got the car pulled over into a gas station parking lot, uh, he seen that the coolant bottle was empty. So he let the car cool down because it was extremely hot. And then he went to add coolant. Well... Most of these cars, especially with these type of bottles, the ones that don't have a radiator a cap on the radiator, these cars have a pressurized coolant system and you really shouldn't open the bottle or add coolant in there unless the motor is cold. So he's trying to let the car cool down so that he can add coolant. But it was already too late. The head gasket had blown and the car would no longer start after he turned it off. This is normally the death of cars over 10 years old. They develop a coolant leak somewhere. A hose leaks, a radiator leaks, uh, uh, some other kind of connection leaks or joint, and then uh, you see the low coolant light in the overfill reservoir you don't do nothing about it and before you know it you've overheated the car if you don't get this fixed i'm gonna urge you get it fixed at whatever the cost is it might cost you two three hundred dollars to get it fixed but now this car i called the dealer and to change the head and the head gasket and whatever related damages was done like the thermostat housing cracked and it's now leaking that cost is fifty six hundred dollars and that's just the estimate there may be more damage so let's just say only the head is damaged the dealer has to warranty the head so they only get refactured remanufactured heads from the dealership so because that cost is 2600 bucks, then the cost to do the work is about 2400 bucks. Well, that runs the cost of the total job up. But they told me it was 5600 bucks and the labor was 2400 bucks. So you're talking about a $3200 head, which uh, is the only way that they can warranty it. But if they get into the job and pull a head off, the block could have damage. Well, if the block has damage, then they're going to need a whole motor. So uh, the cost of the job to fix it exceeds the cost 
of the money that the guy owes on the car and the value of the car is only around six thousand dollars so would you put fifty six hundred dollars into a car that's only worth about six thousand probably not now what happens when you overheat a car most of these cars have aluminum heads aluminum is a softer metal that under extreme heat can deform now your coolant normally boils under pressure like in this system it's a pressurized system at 275 degrees Fahrenheit water will boil at about 235 degrees Fahrenheit so if you're running water in the motor versus coolant that water will overheat before coolant will now if you have coolant in an unpressurized motor it'll overheat at something like 265 degrees Fahrenheit so you got three conditions of an overheat the water will boil a lot quicker than the coolant will so whenever you're playing this uh, motor roulette game and you're adding uh, coolant or water to your motor keep that in mind that you're more likely to damage and destroy the motor if you're using water than you are coolant. The final thing that I'm going to explain right here is kind of what happens to the motor. Once the motor overheats, uh, the block is normally steel, which doesn't deform as quick as the aluminum head. This is a head cover, and there's a line that goes along there some people call it the valve cover. It's the cover for the cams. Same difference. Under that, you have the head. So the head starts about at this line here, and it goes down the motor till it meets with the block. That may be 6 inches deep. That may be uh, 12 inches deep. However long that is, that's where it mounts to the block. Now, once this car overheats, this aluminum will deform when it heats up and cools down and there's a seal in between this head and the motor block when that head deforms it'll cause some warping action in it which causes the head gasket to allow combustion air oil and or coolant to transfer into their different chambers that they don't belong in. For example, I pulled this spark plug out right here on the number three cylinder. When I pulled that spark plug out, the only thing that's supposed to be in there is combustion air, the explosion from the spark plugs when they meet fuel. Well, when I pulled that spark plug out, it had coolant on it. The spark plug was wet with coolant. That let me know that coolant had filled that chamber and now compression cannot happen in that chamber. So whenever a car runs, it needs four things, air, fuel, proper timing, and compression. Well, once that head gasket blows, you no longer have compression and the motor won't run anymore. So you could crank and crank and crank, this car won't start because it has no compression. And I did do a compression test and the compression test shows that there's not enough compression in the cylinders. The compression should be probably somewhere around 175, 185. The compression here was 60, 30, 0, and 70. So none of these cylinders have enough compression for the car to fire and run. So this car has a blown motor and it's a result of coolant roulette. So let's not play Russian roulette with your motor with coolant leaks. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.